Hello everyone. Kakia yuchat duasak yech ayachat luka hadi na chatsiti achna daka hidi yechit shangu chedi yadi ayachat gunana na chatsiti. My Klinket name is Kakia, and my English name is Crystal Rose Dementif Whirl. You can call me Crystal Whirl, and I am very honored to be here to share some insights on being an indigenous artist. This is a picture of downtown Juneau. I am from Juneau, Alaska. I am from the Raven Sockeye clan on my father's side, I'm Clinket and Filipino. And on my mother's side, I am Athabascan. Uh, I am Clinket, Athabascan and Filipino. Here are images of me um, and my lifestyle living in Juneau, Alaska with my family. I had a very uh, both traditional and contemporary upbringing in, uh, in our family. As you can see here, we spent a lot of time doing subsistence, fishing and hunting and living off the land. Um, and we also practice our ceremonies. Uh, we wear our regalia. Um, and that's kind of where I started creating art at a very young age, being exposed to our culture uh, as Klinket and Athabascan people. My color palette tends to be very bright and vibrant. Uh, the more I travel, the more I'm exposed to different color palettes, different cultures, um, and different techniques and ways of creating. And it's a really wonderful way of networking and meeting other artists. I started by going to the Institute of American Indian Arts uh, in Santa Fe, New Mexico where I earned my BFA in studio arts. And that really gave me uh, the tools to understand um, techniques and methods of how to create art and how I can apply it as a business person. Here's some of my paintings. Um, one of the amazing merits of being an indigenous creator is um, I get to work for myself. I'm my own boss. Uh, I choose my own path. But the challenge on the flip side of that is I have to be very disciplined. Um, I have to work very hard. I have to meet deadlines. And uh, I have to write a lot about myself. I have to talk a lot about myself in order to get grants, funding, residencies, and opportunities. And so I have to be very persistent and adamant. I wake up every morning and I remind myself, I love what I do. I love to create um, and I will work hard every day to continue my path as an artist. One of my goals in life uh, as an artist was to be able to travel the world and allow my art to take me around. Um, and so after I finished school, I went to Vancouver and I did a three-year apprenticeship with a mentor, Robert Davidson. He's a Haida artist uh, based in BC, Canada, who really helped me learn the ABCs and the principles of our traditional design. Uh, and that design we call form line design, which is specific to the Pacific Northwest Coast arts uh, tribes the Clinket, the Haida, and the Simshian. And so I really uh, have built a career for myself being recognized as an art indigenous artist that does traditional form line design. But a lot of my work is very contemporary because of the color palette uh, or the medium or technique that I use. Um, my, a lot of my upbringing had to do with my grandmother, Rosita Whirl, my mother, Beverly Dementif. Um, I had many mothers and aunties that helped raise me and, and understand who I am, where I'm from, and being proud of who I am and knowing who I am, where I come from. Um, and as it applies to living in two worlds, the modern world um, and the traditional world. And so in our family, 
we had to know how to be subsistence uh, and harvest sustainably, how to introduce ourselves in our language um, and how we relate to everyone, how do we participate in ceremony and understand protocols. But we also had to go to college and get a degree, but we could choose where we wanted to and what we wanted to study. And so I really dove into the path of art. And last May, I got this incredible opportunity to design an uh, airplane for Alaska Airlines. And I really leveraged this as an opportunity to not just put indigenous and clinket design on an aircraft that would be flown around the world for the next 10 years, but an opportunity to name an airplane in our language. The airplane is named Khatkwani, which translates to the salmon people. It's an ode to our relationship we have to the, our responsibilities we have to the salmon. Um, and so I really push for uh, educating and sharing how our culture is related to the land and the salmon and how we're affecting them to this day. Um, we have a lot of issues with salmon in Alaska today with the salmon numbers are going down and so it's affecting how we traditionally harvest our salmon. Um, so a lot of my art now has a lot to do with salmon and what you can do as a supporter to contribute. Uh, during COVID, I was in lockdown in my house. I was completely isolated for five months and I just used that time to focus on creating. Never stop creating art. Always, always create um, I keep books near me all the time that have references of our traditional art, our regalia, our jewelry, um, and of other contemporary Native artists that I admire so that I'm constantly surrounded by inspiration at my fingertips. Um, I also use the internet and Instagram as an opportunity to follow artists that really inspire me. Um, and this generates motive and energy for me to keep creating and keep going. Um, one thing you always have to be adamant to is following applications, requests for proposals, art callouts, apply to everything. Really make yourself be a yes, yes man, yes woman, yes. Um, because the more you put yourself out there, you're casting a net to catch you know, if you can catch at least one fish every time you cast a net for every four or five applications, it becomes a lot of work, but uh, the more you do it, the more you realize um, you don't see rejection. When I don't receive an award, it's not rejection. It's, it's not failure. It's a part of my process of success. Uh, I got an opportunity to design for Google Chrome browser. And again, this was me being open to opportunity and really promoting myself. I really leverage Instagram as an opportunity to promote myself, um, especially since COVID, the world went online, all eyes went to the internet. And I saw that as opportunity to put my work out there and be discovered. One of the uh, requests for proposals I received in the past two years was to create uh, public art. And um, I've been really channeling and manifesting uh, to create public art because I want to think bigger, I want to work bigger, I want to put myself out there. And even on the hard days, uh, I have to remind myself um, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and that I have to work very hard for it. Um, it's a lot of work. It's There's a lot of challenges, you know, when I'm doing public art. I don't necessarily understand terminology for architecture or the blueprints. Um, I have to ask for a lot of help. And so being an artist in public art has really forced me to 
reach out and ask people for help and hire others um, or trade art for their advice on, you know, how do I do this? How do I apply to this? How do I do a mural? This is my first mural that I did. It's in Juno on the downtown library building. It's a mural I created because I wanted to commemorate Elizabeth Pradovich. She's a Clinket woman activist who in the 1940s helped pass an anti-discrimination law. Um, this was back in the 1940s when there was a lot of discrimination towards Alaska Native people. There were signs on restaurant doors that said, no dogs, no natives. Um, there were separate segregated bathrooms for uh, natives. And so you know, the government, the church, the school um, had all coincided together to basically um, rid of indigenous culture, language, and way of life. And yet we have um, persisted to exist and are here to this day thriving. And in my hometown, there's very, there was very little representation of indigenous people and stories told by our own people. And so I sought this opportunity and I did a uh, camp a campaign and a GoFundMe fundraiser online to help pay for the supplies and reached out to my community to help me um, pay my apprentices who I was training um, and really make this story come to life. And I reached out to Elizabeth's family to get her, their permission to use her image. Um, and now people who come to visit Juno, who come on the cruise ships, they dock and the first thing they see is this mural. This mural welcomes everyone to Juno and um, it really launched my career towards working bigger in murals. This is a basketball court that I painted in Sitka, Alaska. And this was a project that happened um, over a few years. I, it was funded by Project Backboard and Five Star Basketball. I had reached out to them on their Instagram years ago and said, Here, here's my artist website. This is who I am. Basketball is uh, significant to Alaska Native people, and it would be an incredible contribution to have one of our basketball courts in our communities be renovated and painted with one of our designs. Years later, um, a funder discovered my work and requested that I be the artist for this project. And so I selected this court. Again, it goes back to me putting out the energy, manifesting what I want to do, but also really being adamant about pushing my name and my brand and putting myself out there which isn't always the most comfortable thing to do as an artist. We're taught to be humble, uh, especially in our culture as Native people. You know, we're, we're taught to be humble and not boast about ourselves. But as an artist, you really have to step outside of that um, to promote yourself and at some points be a little bit aggressive so that you're, you're heard and that you're taken seriously and that you are a professional. This is a mural I did in Anchorage, downtown Anchorage. Um, and this, again, was me applying uh, to applications and really pushing myself and putting myself out there as an indigenous artist and wanting to see more indigenous artists telling our own story in our communities. My family and I own a small business called Trickster Company. Um, my brother Rico is an artist and started the brand by hand painting skateboard decks and selling them online. And they would sell quicker than him and I could paint them. And so he decided to open a shop. And at the same time I was finishing my degree 
at the Institute of American Indian Arts. And I knew that I wanted to start an art business downtown Juneau. And we came together and opened up a brick and mortar called Trickster Company. We are an innovative indigenous graphic design and art gift shop. Um, since COVID, we shut down the brick and mortar, but we've gone 100% online and we've been doing wonderful online. It's a small family operation. Uh, we do a lot of our own laser cutting and engraving for our jewelry, our coasters, our ornaments, and various gifts. And we also work with manufacturers um, within the States and Canada as much as possible to manufacture skateboards, basketballs, sunglasses, um, and all sorts of gifts. And I also get opportunities to be featured artists with different brands, such as Weston skis and snowboards, um, or Pret ski helmets, smart wool socks. And um, this past year, I got the opportunity to paint and design a skateboard that was put onto a USPS postal stamp. Um, and again, this is um, work that is every day. I show up for it every day. It's hard some days. Um, and it's hard to keep up, but it's in the end the most rewarding to be a creative person and to fulfill and quench my thirst to create. Um, I'm from the Raven Sockeye clan and the Raven character in our culture is known to be a trickster, to be a creator, to be curious and always thirsty for more. And so again, I I challenge you to wake up every day and start by fixing your bed because it sets you up for success when you start your day one by one uh, with small steps and you know create lists of things that you need to do to accomplish. Create lists that motivate you. What do you like about yourself and your art? Write it down. Save that for an application that you might need someday. Well, I hope that everyone here has had a really good experience. I uh, want to thank you for letting me share your art. If you get the opportunity, please check out uh, our shop online. It's called TricksterCompany.com. We ship everywhere in the world, including Sweden. Um, and if you like, you can follow me on Instagram at Crystal Whirl. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and then I also have my artist website, crystalworld.com. Give it a look. And I'm super thrilled to be here. I wish I could be there in person. Blanche for your time. Have a wonderful day.